Here's 10 complex tips and tricks for Unreal Editor to make your map building more enjoyable. Starting off with number one, you probably already know one of the moving methods, which is holding right click and moving with your W, A, S and D keys and looking around with your mouse. Did you know there's a second way? What? Hold down left click, move your mouse forwards to move forwards and back to move backwards. While holding a left click, you can also move left and right to move your camera. This is a very weird way of moving, which I don't personally like, but maybe some people do. Quick motion are basically just checkpoints for your camera. If you hold down control and press any of the numbers from one to nine on your keyboard, for example, I'm gonna press control one, that's gonna set a bookmark right up here into bookmarks. It says jump to bookmark one. If you move anywhere on the map now and just press number one, it will set you back there. What am I gonna do? Viewports. Viewports are just a fancy word for more windows. Are you sure about that? You can click here, window, go down to viewports and enable how many you want. For example, I want two. I can drag this tab anywhere on the screen letting it go up here, now we have two viewports. But the best part is, you can set one viewport to be unlit, wireframe, or anything down below. So you're basically having two windows for one. Or, you can click in the right side of your toolbar, this small window icon, that will open up four windows for you. Here you can have many different ones. For example, I have usually have one on lit here, lit here, lighting only to see my lighting and visible collisions. When working with many objects in your scene, you might run into issues like sorting, for example, as I have here in my outliner. Even if I have some file management here, it's still very cluttered. Let's quickly sort that out by Moving this to a new folder here. But if you don't want to run into issues like this, you can make a new folder, name it anything you want and right click on it, going down and pressing make current folder. This will highlight a green, making it, making sure that everything that you take from your content drawer will, will be instantly added your folder. You can change this folder up to any folder you want. For example, the backgrounds, make current folder. And now if I try pine tree here, it will add it under here. When creating custom buildings, you might need to change some textures on your walls or floors. To fix this problem, just find a wall that will be your blank canvas. For example, this will be my wall. Then find a second wall from the content drawer, any wall, pretty much. Once you find your second wall, click on it and find the details panel. Scroll down and find primary or secondary, whichever you want. If you want, for example, this texture to brick texture, click here and press copy. Now go back to your so-called blank wall, click on it find the same details panel, go down to the texture data, primary or secondary, it doesn't really matter. Primary is for this front side and secondary is for the back side. Then click here and press paste. This will change the texture of it from this to this. <laughs> Man, I'm dead. When working with walls or any other object in uh, UVFN, you might see this problem where your wall is selected, but the gizmo is not centered or not even close to your wall. To fix this, you hold down Alt and hold down middle mouse button over the arrow. Then you move it until it's set inside your wall and positioned correctly. Then you press right click on your wall, go to pivot, and set as pivot offset or if it's set incorrectly 
you can try and right click on your wall, go down to pivot, reset pivot offset. This might fix it, but sometimes it doesn't. Whoa, calm down, Jamal. Don't pull out the nine. <laughs> For the next tip, I had to go into my map that I'm making. But uh, here you can see a custom painting and here you can see a custom poster that I have made with Photoshop. Both of these are made with Photoshop. To make one of these, you go down into your content drawer, type in poster, pick any one. I'm just going to choose this one. Let me quickly rotate it so it's facing me. Then you go back to your your map's name and uh, I have a specific folder for this which is I think images yes uh, you can go into your files and find an image that you want to use for the poster you just drag it in it's gonna look something like this then you take that image I'm just gonna use a different one for this example let go over the poster it's gonna say something and just click OK and it's gonna change the material to make it look like the image. You can resize this however you want. This looks pretty squarish. That's because uh, that's how I made it in my Photoshop app. But yeah, that's pretty much it. When working on a map that is quite dark, you might run into issues where you place a lamp down and change its light settings, but it doesn't seem to affect low settings because you cannot see light on low settings. To fix that, I personally just go up here, press lights and use any one of these lights, usually point light or spotlight and add that into the lamp and that will internally make the light shine, even on low settings. Wait a minute, who are you? Cinematics. For cinematics, we're going to have three tips, aka parts. First, we're going to have fade transition. Second, game camera to cinematic camera. And third, audio. You know what? I love myself. Even though I look like a burnt chicken nugget, I still love myself. Starting off with fade transition. It's pretty simple. I have a simple camera cinematic that I just made. Nothing complicated, just two cameras. And... This middle part, I want to fade because it cuts very sharply. Here, you press track, go down to fade track. I'm going to move it down for convenience six. And here in the middle of where your clip clip changes, you press new key frame. You go a little bit to the left, a little bit to the right here. I'm going to zoom in. You can make this as even or as uneven as you like. I'm just going to leave it as it is. Okay. So here, if you turn this to one, it's going to be fully pitch black. And here, if it's a zero, it's going to be fully transparent. So here, if we just take a look at this, it's going to have a slight fade. If you want the fade to be longer, you just extend this arm and this arm. And it's going to be longer smoother animation and that's it for page transition let's go on to game camera huh. okay. i'm going to use the same fade transition camera here you go to camera cuts right click go to the very top and enable can blend then if you hover over this corner you're gonna see a yellow triangle if you move it to the right it's gonna make a curve this curve means that your camera will I mean this is this is just an example how it shows me but uh, wherever you are it's gonna transition from there and go into the cinematic it's gonna play the whole cinematic and here at the end you can do the same thing with the yellow triangle I'm gonna zoom in again you can just drag it out as long as you want and it's gonna fade from this back to your game camera photo no hi okay on the last part audio slash sounds go down here right click go up to audio track click it it's gonna say something um 
you click OK. And it's going to create an audio track. I'm going to drag it down. Then you click the plus icon and you choose any sound. If you have any sound imported, you can just search it up and it should pop up. I'm just going to use Church Lava Loop Q. Anything works. Here you can change the duration of it. I'm just going to have it play for the whole thing. If you want to add a transition, then you just hold this yellow triangle again, just how we did with camera cuts. Drag it out. I usually like to make it pretty long. And here at the end as well. Just drag that out. Take a listen. Holy shit, dude. Ah! Holy shit. And lastly, tip number 10. It's going to be sky device slash post processing volume because both of these working together are just insane for map creation to get your sky device it's just as simple as going to your content drawer and typing in sky device you can drag this out if you don't see it press the button g on your keyboard and you will see it you can change some settings here well i'm just going to set some settings so it's a bit different so as you can see here setting the sky to pink then if you want to add your uh, post-processing volume, you go up here to the quickly add, go down to visual effects and drag it out here, let go. And if you want it to be in a like room or something or a special effect in some places, you leave it as a box. You can just resize it as much as you want. But if you want it to cover the whole map, go down to post-processing volume settings an infinite extend is going to extend around the whole map it may not look like that but it is it's more of like a camera filter that you just add above it you can control the mid tones of your map which may make it very beautiful sometimes may not here you can add film grains to your map this could be useful for horror maps if you want and you have motion blur if you go down to lens you can turn on bloom this is for your sun there's exposure, I'm not gonna mess with that. Chromatic aberrations, you can change the intensity, which will make the sides of your map. It's more like a glitch effect. I don't know what to call it. Yep, you have that. You can have lens flares. I don't think it's gonna work now because I don't think we're in Fortnite. That's okay. But under image effects, you can open thickness intensity. This could be very cool for horror maps. It just change the outside view so it's a bit darker. Yeah, that's basically that. And you can do much more with uh, your sky device and post processing volume. And that's going to be it. Thanks for watching, guys. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And see you in the next one.